by the power of the Holy Spirit. I release the sword of God, the word of God, against any device from hell that is tormenting your family, that is tormenting your life. I release the sword of God, which is the word of God, to disrupt the plans of the enemy. In the name of Jesus. I want you to know that you cannot sit down and observe the enemy make havoc. You take care of him. Satan and his demons are like bacteria. They create a wound and they feed on the wound and they multiply on that wound. But I want you to take your own life in your own hands through the grace of God and say, I am going to take authority. I am going to take authority. And God will back it. He will back it. I feel the Lord is saying to someone, I will send the angel with flames. Amen. I will send the angels with flames. Call for them. Just call for the angels. The Lord said, I will send them with flames. Amen. That's why you have them. When you feel stuck, you call. You call. Because you are a child of God. You have a right to the angels of God. And the Lord said, when you call them, I will send them with flames. Amen. I will send them with flames to battle a heavenly battle for you. And I feel that this is God's commitment to us. I will send them with flames. Have you ever felt stuck? And even to pray, you cannot pray. Sometimes you don't need to pray. Just say, angels of the Lord, I call upon you. Because see, we are humans. We can get weak. Sometimes we don't even know what to tell God. But sometimes only one word. Angels of the Lord, I call. I call. And we have the right to execute judgment. How many of you know that you have the right to execute judgment over the enemy? But you must know the word of God because the enemy is a very legal-minded person. You need to know that most of the prayers we can pray does not do Satan anything because we are not legally praying. You need to understand to pray legally. You don't just go to court and talk anyhow you want to talk. When you go to court, they expect you to speak legal things. They are not expecting you to tell stories. You stand before the judge and you are telling stories. He will just say, you don't know what you're here for God. When you stand before the judge, you tell the judge. Article this and that says this. And therefore, I am here. And that's why we have scriptures. We have the Bible. You quote the scriptures. Sit and listen. The Bible says that when I call upon the name of the Lord, I will be saved. Now you listen. I'm calling upon the name of the Lord. You speak like a child of God. You speak the legal word of God. The Bible says that my body is the temple of the Most High. Sickness, I disallow you. I disallow you. The Bible says that upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance. And the children of Jacob will possess their possession. And I am one of them. You know, when Jesus went into the temple, he saw the woman. He said, this woman too is a daughter of Abraham. What Jesus was saying, this woman have access to every healing released by the covenant of Abraham. Therefore, she doesn't have to be bent like this. And 
you have that right. You have that right. You can say those equal words and the Lord will honor you. The Lord will honor you. Before I can call on the elders to pray for those who are here today for prayers, I want you to know a few things when it comes to the things of God. Jesus hears your heart. He knows when your heart is crying. He hears your heart. He listens to your heart. He knows when your heart is in pain. He understands when your heart is crying out for something. He knows that. In the book of Mark chapter 10, verses 46, there's a man whose heart was crying after Jesus. The Bible says that there was a large crowd, but their hearts were not crying. But there was a man whose heart was crying. There was a man whose heart was crying in the crowd, and this man was a blind man, but his heart had eyes. He could see spiritual things that others could not see. He saw Jesus as the Savior. He saw the Savior. He heard about the Savior. And the Bible says he cried out. He said, save me. Save me. And you know what Jesus told him? When he cried out in Mark chapter 10, verses 52, this is what Jesus told him. Go, said Jesus. Go, said Jesus. Your faith. Have heard your heart. Go. You are healed. You are healed. There are two very key words in the word faith. Confidence. Confidence in the name of Jesus. How many of you have confidence in the name of Jesus? Confidence. In the name of Jesus, confidence and trust. Confidence and trust. Today you hear in me, confidence and trust. This was what this man had. He knew that today is my last day. Sitting down at this spot, crying out for help. Your faith, Jesus said to him. As you listen to me today, your faith is your faith. You can say today, Lord, I have confidence. Lord, I trust you. It could be many years of pain, but I trust you today. Could be many years of stagnation, but I trust you, Lord. It could be many years of being continuously afflicted by a particular pain or disease or infirmity, but today you can say, Lord, I trust you. It could be a long wait for a breakthrough. You can say, Lord, today I trust you. I trust you, Lord. I trust you. It could be a long wait for that job, a long wait for that supernatural provision. And you can say to the Lord, I trust you. And I'm going to prove my trust. I'm going to prove my trust. I'm going to agree with someone. And we're going to pray. And the salvation of the Lord, the salvation of the Lord, will come. God's salvation. Today, if you are in the midst, and you are like this man who sits down blind, waiting for that day, for that opportunity. 
I can say today is that opportunity for you. Even as you watch online, you can say today is the opportunity. I trust God. I believe in God. I know that as I hear these words, I will get the same result that blind Batimon had. The result of healing. The result of a breakthrough. The result that I can see the way. The result that God is opening that door. I can feel the healing power of God in my body. I can already see God sending that help my path. I can already see God lifting me up from where I am and strengthening me for what is before me. I can see God sending that gift to me. woman wanted something for Christmas and she didn't have the money but she had in church that Jesus said ask me anything I will give you she wasn't a strong believer but she had that word and she said Jesus I have heard that we should ask anything and you will do it. I ask for this particular gift. And then she sat down. She made an order for something else. But then someone mistakenly make the orders and sent her exactly what she needed. She received it. And she called back the people. She said, this is not what I ordered for. And they said, that is yours. Someone bought it for you. And they said, we should send it to you. And the person says, we should not tell you their name. But the exact thing she asked for was sent to her. Simple prayers. Jesus, I heard that if we need anything and ask you, you will do it. And I ask you for this gift. I need it. Send it for me. You see, this is faith in simple form. But she received what she has asked for. And it was given to her. The word of God is true. How true is it to you? I don't know. But his word is true. His word is true. All you need is to say his word. And believe, have confidence. And have trust. In that word have confidence and trust in the word regardless what it is don't think about how big it is there's nothing too hard the Bible says behold he is the God of all flesh there is nothing too hard for him there is nothing too hard for him a man applied for a loan in the bank long time. Every time he applied, they will reject. Anytime he applied, they will reject. He went to see a pastor and the pastor said, apply again. He said, I've applied multiple of times. They rejected. He said, apply again and go there. He said, well, even if I apply now, I will not be able to reach there on time because where I live, the train takes this time and it will be Saturday. They close 12 o'clock. They close 12 o'clock. And from where I live, if I live there with a the train to go to where the bank is, they will already close anyhow. 
And the pastor said, if you believe in these prayers, apply again and go there. He said, well, I will do it. He applied. And that Saturday, he booked an appointment. They said Saturday he has to be there. He applied. He went to the place. His train was a bit late. So he got there five minutes for them to close. The moment he walked in, everyone was leaving and there was a lady sitting down. And that lady was purposely sitting down just because of her. I believe God designed it for him. God designed it for him. And the moment he got in, he said, this is my name. And the lady said, oh, I saw your file. We've already approved it. Just go back. Just sign these documents and go. No complication, no interview. They were all exhausted. But his file was there. God showed up for him. All they were waiting for, for him to come and sign. And because it was just five minutes for them to close, there was no time to talk, to interview, to ask him for all of the documents. They just said sign. But he prayed and he believed and he acted upon his prayers. The pastor said, if, we, if you believe that what we have prayed for, you believe in that, now you reapply and book an appointment. And his fear was, how am I going to apply? When are they going to approve it? I got a few days. I live far away. And the pastor said, if you believe in what we have just prayed, just do your own part. It's all that God needs. You see, sometimes you just need your own part. All you need is to play your own part by faith. Believe that God is more than able. Believe that God is able. Believe that there is nothing impossible with God. He can do what no man can. And that's why you have him as God in your life. Because you got limitation, but he doesn't. Today, if you are trusting God for something, truly believe in God, you say, God, I'm trusting you. I'm trusting you. And I know my faith will bring that which I'm trusting you on. The elders will be here to pray with you. To believe God simply with you. To make that simple prayers. To lay hands and to pray for you. To believe God simply with you. And see God do what only Him can do. See God do what only Him can do. I want you to come. If you are here with a need. And you need God's divine intervention. Say, God, I'm here. I need your move. It could be for a job. It could be for a child. It could be for a husband. It could be for a wife. It could be for your children. It could be for a divine breakthrough. It could be for God to change something. It could be just that. Just say, God, I'm coming. I'm coming by faith. And I'm believing. And I can tell you, if you come by faith, and you believe God by faith, the Lord will show up because it is His Word that said it. It's the Word of God. It's the Word of God. He says, ask me anything and I will do. This is the confidence I want you to have in me. Now whatever you ask in my name, you surely will receive. And even before you ask, you have already received it. You see, God is saying, even before you ask, know already that I have already 
done it. Listen to this word. Even before you ask, know. Even before you ask, already know that I have done it. This is the attitude you need to have when you approach me. The attitude of, I know that I already have that which I'm asking for. Today, the elders are here, come on. If you need an agreement, if you need a prayer, say, God, I'm going. I'm going to let everything at your feet. I'm going to surrender. I know you're going to move. Elders, come on. Pastors, come on. I'm trusting you, God. I'm believing you, God. And I say testimonies. I can already see my testimony. I can see testimony. I can see testimonies already. I'm trusting you, God. I'm trusting you that my testimony is there. I can see it in my hands. I have already received it. I'm believing by faith. I'm believing by faith. As your word says, it is done already. It is done as you believe in God, I know. It is done. It is done for me. It is done. 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 Jesus. Jesus. I call upon your name. I call upon your name. Father, through your son Jesus, I ask for someone who is watching today via Facebook, YouTube, as someone sick watching. I prophesy God healing in your life. I speak the word of God by the stripe of Jesus Christ. Be healed. Be healed. Someone watching today with a pain in your body, I rebuke that pain in the name of Jesus. And I speak God's divine healing to visit you wherever you are watching from in the name of Jesus. Someone is going through a spiritual affliction. spiritual affliction being tormented being confused depressed anxious hearing voices nightmares night terrors Dreams of dying. Dreams of someone chasing you. Today I stand upon the word of God wherever you're hearing me. You demons, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. And I command you to be silent in the name of Jesus. I take authority because of the blood of Jesus. And because of his atonement on the cross, as you listen to me, you spirit of infirmity, you unclean spirit, I speak against you. And I, 
nullify every activity of yours in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Whatever affliction, whatever infestation, whatever oppression, whatever obsession, I speak the word of God is against you. You in spirit of insanity. I speak against you. I release the fire of the Holy Ghost to consume your activities in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You spirit of division. You spirit of confusion. You spirit of hate. You impure spirit. You spirit of anger. You spirit of confusion. Right now, I take authority in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The word of God is against you. The word of God is against you. Someone hearing me today. Every financial curse, hardship, hardship, spirit having access to your finances, working hard and seeing nothing. I stand upon the word of God. Whatever money sucking demon that is existing today in the name of Jesus, I rebuke you and I speak against you in the name of Jesus. I prophesy you will enjoy your labor, you will enjoy your labor, your money will bring greater rewards to you. Whatever you work for, you will enjoy. Any diversion of your finances, I stop it right now in the name of Jesus. And I speak that this, the power of God and the Holy Spirit will channel your money in the right direction for the right reward in the name of Jesus. By the power of your Spirit of God, Someone hearing me. Family. Family confusion. It is settled. I call upon the angels of the Lord to get to work, to bring restoration in the name of Jesus. To bring restoration, I decree by the power of the Holy Spirit that there will be restoration in your family in the name of Jesus. The Lord will restore the years that the canker worm has eaten, the years that the locust has eaten, the years that the grasshoppers have eaten, the years of fear and doubt and loss. The Lord will restore it in the name of Jesus. Every satanic influence snatching the children away from you. Today, by the power of the Holy Ghost, any satanic influence snatching the young ones, drugs, addiction, rebellion, pride, I break those curses in the name of Jesus. I break those curses in the name of Jesus. The Lord will assert your authority over your family in the name of Jesus. Wherever you are losing authority, wherever you are losing rights 
over your family, over your children. I speak by the authority of the Holy Spirit that the Lord will restore your authority in the name of Jesus. Any intrusion in your home, any satanic intrusion through dreams, through your thoughts, through other entry points, today by the power of the Holy Spirit, I seal every entry, every access to you in the name of Jesus. The Lord today will avenge for you. The Lord today will send angels to fight for you. The Lord today will send his word to deliver you. Let every home that is present in this place, even online, may the Lord send his warring angels in those homes. I deploy warring angels with flames, with flames, with flames in the name of Jesus with flames in the name of Jesus, warring angels with flames by the power of the Holy Spirit. I want you to rise up on your feet if you can. Lift your two hands up heaven. Feel the power in the presence of God. Truly lift your hands. Say, Father, I receive your power. I receive your authority. If you do that truly, you know, you feel the power of God. You feel the victorious power of God coming upon you. You feel the anointing of God being released upon your life. Drawing power from him. Drawing power. I feel that God is moved. God is here. Drawing power. God, I draw power from you. God, I draw power from you. God, I draw power from you. I lift my hands to heaven and I draw power from you. I draw power. Spirit of the living God, now you come. one thing I really want you to do. I want you to stretch your two hands right up heaven. That's what I want to do. God, I draw power from you. I draw power from you. I draw power from you. 
I draw power from you. Repeat this word, God. I draw power from you. I draw power from you today. Right now, I draw power from you. I stand in the place of authority. I draw power from you. I stand in the place of authority. I stand in my place of authority and I draw power from you. Jesus. 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 Receive power. Receive power. Receive power. Receive power. I feel God touching someone now. Carry sin to someone. Receive the power. Receive the power. Receive the power. If you want it, take it now. Take it. Take the power. Move in that place of authority. Take it now. 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 Receive the power. Receive it. The Lord is saying, you are moving in your place of power. You are moving in your place of authority. You are moving in your place of influence. You are moving in your place of influence. She caraba. Elders, help something. God is releasing. I don't know. For some of you, this is going to be the, the moment of breakthrough. God is saying to me that it's happening right now. Someone, someone, it, it may not be all of you, but God is moving right now. And I feel the power of God is moving in this place. You can feel it in your, you can feel that God is releasing some unusual grace upon you. That's the word. He said, I'm releasing unusual grace. I'm releasing unusual grace right now. Right now, God is releasing unusual grace. It's happening. It's happening. It's happening. You hear it. You feel it. You sense it. Unusual grace. Unusual grace. Unusual grace. It is at this moment that that sickness is living. It's, it's at this moment that sickness is living. It was waiting for this moment. I knew something was about to happen. You feel it. You will feel it. You will feel it. You will sense it. You will feel it. You will feel it and you will sense it. There is a supernatural power coming upon some of you in this place. It's here. It's here. God is saying, take it. It's restoring someone's strength. Take strength. God is saying, take strength. Take strength. Take strength. Take strength, source. Take strength. She can. Liba Rabarab. Is here. The Lord is saying, Take it. Take it. There is a discharge of power in this place, and the Lord is saying, You take it. You take it. It's your moment. It's everybody's moment. It's everybody's moment. There is supernatural grace that has been released. You can take it. It's for you too. 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 The Lord is saying, it's for you too. It's for you. It's for you. It's for you. She cut out. I feel God saying to someone, I restore your visions. Someone is in this place, you used to have visions, and it stops. And the Lord is saying, I am restoring that now. You used to have visions, visions. The visions just stop. The Lord is saying, I'm restoring back to you. I don't know who this is for, but the Lord is saying, I'm restoring that back to you. You begin to move again in the rhyme of the Spirit and you begin to see visions, 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 visions. 
visions visions shika bada 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 libranda la kabuze telege de kete keta bata ba libara bara bara basanda kumda kala batala batala ba libara basende de you know Oh, you know, I feel the Lord is saying to someone today, you have allowed fear. Fear, fear, fear. I see the cloud of fear, the cloud of fear living someone, the cloud of fear living someone, insecurity. I want to focus here. The cloud of fear. If you are in this place and you have been so much fearful, so fearful, so fearful, fearful of what God is calling you to do, I see God taking off a cloud and the Lord is saying this cloud is a cloud of fear I see God releasing you out of your place of fear and saying now you can freely walk the fear that was over you was not ordinary fear it was a fear that was cast upon you by a trauma that you have been through when you were a child. And from that moment, that fear took over you and that fear has controlled your life. But I see God taking that cloud over someone is a lady, a cloud, a cloud of fear. I just, I want to pray for this person. You know, A, a, a child Come on, my dear. Come on. I want someone to help me. Father, whatever cloud of darkness, cloud of fear, cloud of fear, cloud of fear, as I saw it living. I pray for clarity now. Clarity. 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 Clarity, Jesus. Let every darkness, let every trauma, let every trauma, let every wound be clear today. 
is done in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The Lord is saying, I've given you my word. I've given you my word. Believe in my word. Believe in my word. It's a word for someone. I have given you my word. Believe in my word. My promises for you are yes and amen. Sister Vivian, What the enemy has stolen from you is not material things. You were called to do something. I don't know how to say. got lost in the busyness of life. It got lost. You know it, but you know you don't have it. God is saying, be still. Be still. There is a grace upon your life to do God's work. To do the work of God. Not, I don't mean rear God's work. God really, really, His hand is upon you to do His work. When you came in Australia, that was snatched from you. The Lord is saying, He's restoring you. It's going to take a process. Or you give your hands, you give your life and say, God, I know it's not going to happen right now, but it's going to be a process. And I want to give myself back to this process. God used to show you things. God used to speak to you. You used to see things. Your prayer life was a strong life. And all, and it happens to all of us. Just get lost in the busyness. We know we are not there. We know we are not ourselves. But we hardly find it because of the many things that we have to meet up with. But the Lord is saying to you that that is coming back. That is coming back. I just want to pray with you. It's coming back. You have, you have a big, you have a huge spiritual responsibility. God want to bring you back to that place. The strength is coming back. I want you to lift your hands up heaven. Thank you. He's here with you. The Lord is saying he's here. He's here with you. He's restoring it. I can see God doing it right now. He's restoring it. healing some things, reminding you of certain things. The Lord is reminding you. He's saying, my daughter, yes, this is not you. I know who you are. I know you. 
it will not be taken from you. It won't be taken. I got it. And I'm about to give in. I'm preparing you in the next. It's happening right now. God is just in the next two months, three months, four months. A few things are going to happen in your life. A few things are going to happen in your life in the next few months. God is going to realign you. As the word is giving me, I will realign her. I'm realigning her. I'm realigning her. God loves you so much. He loves you so much. He is realigning you. Vivian, you call for something very good. Far beyond what you can imagine. He called you to be a warrior. He's a warrior. showing me a few things I don't have time I don't have time us to the place where we're supposed to be in your presence where there's fullness where there is fullness look at what God is doing look at what God is doing say the word God is saying someone say the word Say the word and it shall be done. Say the word and it shall be done. Say. 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 Lord is telling me something about very great dreams and hope and aspirations.
call on the ministers to come. Let your heart don't bleed. Take heart. The Lord knows. you have revealed what you have started for many people here Father continue to take people through as we all are in different stages God continue to strengthen continue to strengthen I feel the power of God in this place Before we bring our tithes and offering, I want you to stand up. Please stand where you are. I wanted to mark these things. We don't have time in this house. We will go out very soon. We will be very busy doing different things when we go out. We'll be talking to people. But I wanted to say, God, visit me tonight. And don't forget that you told God that. You, you're going to remember. God will visit you. I see God doing things for some people here. Yeah. And he will not hide it from you. Mark this day on Sunday. You will tell me that Wednesday night, I want you just to leave this place with the full awareness that God, you're not going to hide from me what was meant for me. And when you walk out of this door, don't leave he, everything just here. I want you to go with that expectation that God, tonight, I am expecting a visitation. And watch. You will call me. And don't hesitate. If you are hearing me, to call me in the night or to call Pastor Williams, or to call Pastor Joshua, to call any of the elders, don't hesitate. For me, don't hesitate. And I think for him too, don't hesitate. And I think for the elders too, don't. You, some of you are going to receive a visitation today, tonight. If you don't leave the presence here, if you don't just go out and forget, you go home with the full awareness that God, today, I am expecting a visitation. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. The Lord is going to visit some of you tonight. So my phone will be on and I will hear you. If you don't need to call me, don't call me. But if you need to call me, like a young man came to me and he said, Pastor, how can I experience God? I said, go home and say, God, I want to experience you. Two o'clock in the night, he is calling me, trying to hide. He said, I cannot be it. It's, the, it's like the house is shaking. I said, you said to God, you want to experience God? Trust me, come. You will experience him. Two o'clock in the night, he said, I can't stand it. It's too fearful. So except if it is too fearful, you can call me. If, it is, if it's something that you can handle, just handle it. But I want you to know that it is the Lord that will visit you tonight. It's not the devil. I just want to know that it's the Lord that will visit you tonight. Amen. It's the Lord that will visit you tonight. And if that is going to scare the devil, then he will manifest. 
but it's going to be the Lord that will visit you. Lift your hands up heaven and say, Holy Spirit, I am now aware that you will visit me. I'm ready. I'm prepared. My mind is ready. My spirit is ready. My body is ready. And I'm waiting because you are going to visit me. In Jesus' name. Thank you for your tithes and offering. God bless you.